Yeah, Imam, it doesn't make sense. Those people that we know pray Qiyamul Layl, they look fresh. They're fresh. And he said, لِأَنَّهُمْ خَلَوْا بِالرَّحْمَانِ فَأَلْبَسَهُمْ مِنْ نُورِهِ Because they were in seclusion with the Most Merciful and Allah dressed them with His light. So even though they're not in Jannah hearing the conversation about themselves, they're in the conversation and they're feeling the effects of that conversation and you better believe when Allah boasts about you, you feel it. There's a direct impact and that gives you a way to move forth in this life. Now I'm going to move on in full silat for a reason. Those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that hold on to the covenant with Him, that are able to still continue forward, that are able to still stay focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the people of La ilaha illallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. The covenant that you had, the guidance that you had was karimat al-tawheed, was that word of monotheism, La ilaha illallah. Don't lose it. No matter how down you are with your faith, no matter how you start to feel, don't lose La ilaha illallah. Don't stop asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let you die upon La ilaha illallah. Don't stop renewing your faith with La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Those people, فَمَن تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Those people are people that are holding on with La ilaha illallah. But there is a step beyond that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ You know what's even better than that? What is more pleasing to Allah than the one who calls other people to Allah? And the one who does good deeds. And the one who says, I am from the Muslims. You know, there's a passing grade. And then there's an excellent grade. Passing is taqwa. Excellent is ihsan. You don't just want to pass. You want to go higher and higher and higher and higher. So, قَوْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So long as you maintain. What did the Prophet ﷺ say to that Bedouin man? who came to me, he said, Ya Rasulullah, if I pray five times a day, nothing more, nothing less. I fast, the mandatory fast, nothing more, nothing less. I pay what I have to pay, nothing more, nothing less. Do I get Jannah? The Prophet ﷺ said, if you're truthful, you get Jannah. If that's the type of relationship you want to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where you just ask about doing the bare minimum, fine. If you're truthful to the minimum, You'll get Jannah, but the reality is, is that if you aim for the minimum of good deeds, your sins will certainly multiply over time and rest your heart and erode away that minimum because we often sin unknowingly. And so don't just aim for the minimum, but if you are sincere, if you leave this world and you got your five prayers down and you've got your siyam down of Ramadan and you abstain from the muharramat, from the major sins and knowingly disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you pay the zakah and you do hajj when you, if you are capable of doing so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write us down and accept it. Hajj, Allahumma ameen. And all of that bound by ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadun Rasulullah. Then inshallah ta'ala you'll be included in these people that are mentioned in the beginning here. But do better. Because you're at work. Try to be employee of the month. Try to do better. See every moment as an opportunity for reward. When you listen to lectures about patience, don't just seek a coping method. Seek a rewarding method with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to channel that hardship towards the ultimate abode of ease by reminding yourself, we were not sent here to party. We were not sent here to play. We were not sent here for comfort. But should we have certainty? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unlock Jannatul Yaqeen 
the certainty or the paradise of certainty in our hearts before we arrive at the paradise around us. Nurture your paradise in here and you will realize it in the hereafter all around you. That's what we're taught. But with all of that, dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. This life is the prison of the believer and the paradise of the disbeliever. Seek something greater. When you earn, think about charity. When you retire to your home at night, think about that secret prayer. When others talk about the best restaurant in town, think about how Maghrib is so early here, you people should be fasting. <laughs> SubhanAllah, I was flying through here uh, last month in transit. I'm getting off the plane in London, coming from Nigeria. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll get time for Dhuhr and Asr. Then I get off the plane, it's already dark. I'm like, what's happening here? I hope you all are fasting, inshallah ta'ala, and taking advantage of these days of fasting. This is why the Sahaba used to refer to winter as the spoils of the believer. Allah gives you easy opportunities, easy opportunities, easy opportunities for khair. Think about how you deposit further. And then subhanAllah, I'll end with this. Read about the stories of people who were inspired towards what you should be inspired to now and who realized bi ta'ala what you hope to realize then. Read about the salihin, read about the righteous. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was given the stories of the prophets before him. He said, may Allah have mercy on my brother Moses. He was tested with harder than this and he was patient. Rahim Allahu akhi Musa. May Allah have mercy on my brother Musa alayhi salam. Allah gave him the story of Joseph, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Allah gave him the story of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. Allah gave him all of those stories of prophets and that energizes him. And لِنُثَبِّتَ bihi fu'adak. It gives him firmness alayhi salatu wa salam. Stability, something to aim for more and more and more and more. We have the stories of the prophets. We have the story of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have the story of a Sahaba, Ridwan Allah Ta'ala alayhim. We have the story of a Salaf, the pious predecessors. We have the stories of great people over 1400 years and the stories of great people that are even alive today that can inspire us towards that greater goal and that can remind us what it is that we should be aiming for. And so I often think about that conversation. The difficult conversation that has to happen in a household when you have someone that is aspiring for something greater and others are not on the same page. May Allah make it easy for all of our brothers and sisters that convert to Islam and their families just don't get it. And they are so dedicated towards that destination and talking to their families about trying to understand what they're aiming for and what their motivation is. And sometimes it's hard to convey all of that.